Hey everybody. Wow, there's already some of y'all on here. Hi Jen. Hi Deanna. How is everybody doing? I know it's been a while. The lighting looks a little weird. Hi Tamara. What have y'all been up to? It has been so long since we had a little live chat here. I am in my new sewing studio, in the new house, in my little corner, um, on my comfy chair with some pillows, 10 inch slicer pillow, an old quilt club project pillow. <laughs> All right, so what has been going on? Susie says she loves the chair. Thank you. It is kind of fancy, right? It took me forever to find just the right one. And a lot of times people will say, oh, I see, you know, purple's your favorite color. Or if they see a lot of one color, I'm like, I love all the colors. It just happens to be like the plum from here and the plum from here. And then there's purple in the pillow, blues, aquas, all kinds of stuff. Hi, Mirta. Hi, Mary Ellen. I am Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini. For those that are maybe tuning in and haven't seen me in a while. I post instructional video tutorials here on YouTube and I'm on Facebook, on Instagram. You can find me anywhere as Crafty Gemini. Hi, Sarah, my friend Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness is on. Hey, girl. Hi, Susan, Irene, Rita. Hey, Miss Sheila. How are y'all doing? Good evening. I see a lot of us are tuning in because we're home probably. I just wanted to do kind of an impromptu live chat. I don't have anything, obviously no demo planned for you here, no giveaways, just like a sit down, chit chat kind of thing. Uh, and to check in with everybody and see how you all are doing. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Hazel. Hey, Dave. So yes, here we are. I have a little project bag. I have a tutorial for this on my YouTube channel for sure. If you knit or crochet, it's a little um, project bag, super simple, like a drawstring one. And I have my most current project in here right now. Hi, Enid. Hey, Paula. All right. So I pulled out a couple things because I thought, well, I'll need some content to talk about. Okay. Hey, Stacy from Michigan. And so uh, if you recall back in February, I cannot believe that we are almost to June and my birthday is coming up. It's almost Gemini season, y'all, because uh, I'm a Gemini, crafty Gemini, duh. Uh, my birthday is June 1, so it's coming up. I cannot believe it. I don't even know what day it is today. 18, 19, something like that. But my birthday's coming up. We're about to be in June, and I feel like I just got back from my cruise. So back in February, we went on a quilting cruise for a week. I see some of you on here <laughs> that uh, were on the cruise with us, and we went to the Caribbean for seven days. We had a quilting cruise. We had sewing machines. We made projects, quilts, all the stuff but we also got to get off at the ports and shop. And I never got to show you all stuff that I bought. I don't have everything here, but I thought, oh, that would be cool to do like a little haul of some of the stuff that I bought in, uh, uh, what do I have here? I have fabric that I bought in Puerto Rico and yarn that I bought in Puerto Rico. What did I get? I think I might have some fabric that I got on St. Martin. And... I, I can't even remember. It was so long ago. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So I thought, well, I bought some quilting cottons, uh, like fabrics. I bought some leather, but I don't have it here in the studio. Uh, so I just thought, you know, maybe I'll show you all what I've been up to. I've kind of been a little bit just like uh, drained. I've been working a lot from home. Uh, for those of you that know, you know, I traveled to uh, Colorado to film those videos for Blueprint. So when I got back from the cruise in February, then in March, it was like I came back, what, the 16th, the 9th through the 16th of February was the cruise. Then I came back and on the 23rd of February, so just that next weekend, I left to Colorado for a week to film for Blueprint. And then I came back and then the whole world came to a screeching halt. So we were moving from the old mobile home to here. If you follow me on social media, you probably saw them haul away the mobile home. So we were dealing with that. That got done. The garden, you know, we got kind of a panic mode to like plant as much food stuff as we could. It's just been madness around here. And at the same time, keeping up with running business stuff, filming videos, online courses, just all this kind of stuff. And every day I feel like I'm like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit and knit. And so my husband was like, then just sit and knit, you know? And so I thought to myself, I always try to, I'm such a workaholic that I find an excuse 
to make something that I'm enjoying work related, right? Like I'm testing a pattern that I'm designing, but I'm going to sit here and knit. So I tell myself, you know what? I need to just find something, like pick a project that has no deadline. It's not for anybody else but me. It is not um, for work. It's not a pattern that I designed. <laughs> Sarah says we're the same person. Girl, I feel you, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's the same thing. And I, it's hard, right? Because my business is also my hobby. There are things that I enjoy. But when you tackle, you know, when you tack on that extra level of like, hurry up, clock is ticking, people are waiting for you to release this thing, this deadline needs to be done, this company is waiting for you to do this. It kills all the joy out of it. It's not like relaxing, you know? So I decided that I was going to do this thing, and so I did. Uh, I started following more, more um, they call them podcasters in the knitting and crochet world. You know, we call them like vloggers, like YouTubers. And so I started following more YouTubers maybe like a year and a half ago. And uh, they're knitters and crocheters and people that I just follow and listen to. And so it's, it's weird because it's not for tutorials. It's just to hear them talk about the craft. Does anybody else out there do that? Like, do any of y'all play my videos just to hear me talking sewing and quilting terminology in the background? Um, because I find myself like with headphones on going out to milk the cow while I'm listening to someone talking about the sweaters that they're making and new yarn that they got. I see in the comments, a bunch of you are saying yes. And so it's just like, you, it's almost like you get your fix without having to be in the room, in the craft room with all your supplies set up. I, I don't know, but I think you all speak my language. I think you know what I'm talking about. If I were trying to explain this to somebody who didn't, who wasn't like a maker, they'd be like, no. <laughs> You see, oh, okay, good. I feel better. A bunch of you are saying yes. And so I feel like I'm listening to them and just talking about their projects and what they picked up and stuff that they ordered that came and a new pattern that they're trying. And so I decided, you know what? Let me pick a project from one of these. Oh, Susie says all the time, just to hear your voice. It gives me confidence. I'm so glad to hear that, Susie. Thank you so much. That definitely made my day. That's awesome. Just I'm cheering you on in the background. Like, don't worry if your seam allowance isn't perfect. Just keep sewing. It'll turn out fine in the end, right? And so uh, I follow uh, this lady named Jana. Her channel is called Pearl Together, like P-U-R-L, like knitting and purling. So Pearl Together. And I follow, I've been following her for maybe over a year now. She has a YouTube channel. I love her teaching style. Uh, and she kicked off, you know, I'm on her Patreon thing. Have you all seen that Patreon thing where you can like pledge a certain amount per month for somebody that you like, you know, like the, a YouTuber or whatever, so that they can keep putting out free content. Um, and so, you know, I pledge on her Patreon thing. So she does, a th she just kicked off a new uh, knit along. And I told my husband, it's a cardigan. This is going to be it. Let me sign up for this knit along so that I can get the yarn, follow along with her instructional videos where I don't have to teach. I can be the student. Sarah, can you relate? I'm like all about this. I'm like, I'm just going to sit back and follow along with this project. And there's a fly in here that's driving me nuts. I just ordered some like fly tape. This is madness. Now that my studio is inside the house, super annoying because the doors are always open. We live on a farm in Florida and the flies drive me insane. But there's like one fly in here. So if you see it buzzing around, oh my goodness, just pretend. So annoying. I'm gonna like hang all the fly tape around my house. I don't care how tacky and ugly it looks they kill me. Every time you open a door, <laughs> Sarah says, I just saw the fly. Girl, the fly is super annoying. Okay. Deanna says the window fly tape is the best. Yeah. One of my friends just told me about it. I have no idea what fly tape is. When I was a kid, this is how my mom would do it. She'd be in the kitchen cooking. And if she saw a fly, she would, this is so Dominican. She would grab it in the air, like grab it, catch it in her hand. And she would just swing down like that and she would just throw it to the ground and the fly would be dead because she was slamming it against the floor. Every time she did that, we always thought that she was like gonna hit us and we're like ducking and she's just grabbing a fly and throwing it down. So Dominican. Okay, but anyways, annoying fly, please sit somewhere. And I can't open the door because then probably other flies that are in my house from the kids opening all the doors are gonna come in. Anywho, fly paper, yep, that's what it is. <laughs> Um, so I ordered that stuff. It's on its way. I ordered like 10 rolls straight up. So annoying flies. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> why, 
we're talking about flies. Seriously? Wow. Okay. Um, so I was saying I signed up for this knit along and she, um, Jana put together, you know, kind of like a collaborative thing with a, a shop out in, I want to say they're in Utah. She lives in Wyoming, which is kind of crazy because she's a homesteader like me. We have the same breed of heritage breed cows of Irish Dexters. So we have a ton in common. She has like goats and chickens and all that stuff and gardens. Um, so it's super cool that I get to just follow and be a student. And so I signed up for this knit along. Do y'all want to see the yarn that I got and what it is? I'm trying to organize my life. So I got a binder. Let me show you the binder. To organize my patterns, a three ring binder. I legit have not had a three ring binder since I was in high school, but okay. Okay. So a little binder. I still have to do something cute and put something here, but it's called the Campside Cardi, and the designer's name is Alicia or Alicia Plummer. Hello, look at the back of that cardigan. And there's no buttons or nothing. It just hangs open in the front. There's no other picture of the front of it. So I bought the pattern on Ravelry from the girl. Hey, Laura, thanks for tuning in, girl. Um, yeah, isn't it gorgeous? It's like, it looks like it's three, three different panels of like different eyelets and lacy kind of stuff, but the rest is like just stockinette. And I believe it's knit flat. I can't remember, but I'm following along in the class with my teacher. So I, uh, and then, so this was the designer that, you know, we ended up everybody, you know, you have to buy the pattern, duh, on Ravelry. And then the yarn shop put together like kits or based on the size that you were gonna make, how many skeins of the yarn you needed. And so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go a little outside the box. It just happened to work out that it was purple, y'all. I swear purple is not my favorite color, but this is the yarn I got. Um, I think I needed six skeins. So it's Barocco Vintage DK, and they sent it super quick. The shop is called Needle Point Joint. Is that anybody's um, local yarn shop? I believe they're in Utah. I can't remember. But look at it. Kind of plummy colored. I figured, I mean, this is like a neutral. <laughs> All the colors are neutrals for me. I don't care. I can wear them with anything. You know, with jeans. And it kind of has like a, an almost tonal thing, a, a tonal look to it. And so we like swatching, you know, I'm following step by step. Yeah, it is, Nancy, just like you said, a heathered purple, it's gorgeous. So I made my swatch and I love, look at this, and I have purple on my nails, guys. Purple is not my favorite color. <laughs> Sheila says, really, you went outside the box? Surely not, girl, you know me. I'm always up to experiment and for a challenge. And I love all the colors, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, this thing could have been orange. I just wanted to get something a little darker toned so that it can go with a lot more stuff. Um, but I didn't want to be working with really dark yarn, right? Because they say you have to have really good lighting and I don't want to be trying to sit and knit late at night and be working with like a dark gray or black and how boring is that? You know, I need some color. So I was looking at like a rust colored or this purple. So look at my little swatch, but look how airy and drapey the fabric is. That little cardigan, I live in Florida. A lot of times people are like, oh, you don't need knit sweaters. This is like the perfect weight of a cardigan to just throw over to cut the chill. Now, if you know me, you know that in our old mobile home and my entire life, I grew up in Miami, Florida with no air conditioning, okay? And I spent all my summers in Dominican Republic with no air conditioning. So I'm used to hot and our AC in the old house, we would have it, hey Sally, thank you. I know, I love the jewel tones for sure, girl. We would keep the AC like on 78 or 80. So in this new house, because it's an ICF, which stands for insulated concrete forms, and it's so well sealed, the house, there's no way. Like if you put the AC in this house at 78, it would be so humid in here because the, the exterior of the house is built in a way that it's like a cooler. Um, the condensation buildup in here, who knows, mold, mildew, all this crazy stuff, you just, the temperature of the house inside just cannot get up to 78. So I'm freezing right now. <laughs> It's like 73. This is insanity for me. I was going to put on my Helene cardigan, which I have here, but then I was like, these people are going to think I'm crazy because it's like, hello, you're in Florida and it's May. Why are you wearing a cardigan? But now I'm going to knit and crochet all the things because inside my house, it's freezing, guys. I need to have something, you know, I have like long pajama pants on. <laughs> Sally says 73, almost too warm. Girl, it's freezing. Freezing in here. Okay. And then hold on because then my sewing room, hey Pat, is the coldest room in the house because the AC unit in the attic is above here and there are three vents in this room. So because it's not a room that we're really going in and out of all day, if the door is shut in here and then I come in at night to work, I open the door and I die. It's like 70, I'm dead. 
okay? Um, clearly, I will not survive up north. Oh my gosh, Vesta says my house is 69 all the time. I would legit die. I would be like with a hat, a scarf, all the shawls, knitted sweaters. I can't. So anyways, now I'm super excited because I'm like, I can cozy up in my chair, my couch, and knit all the things. But this is... Look, what a nice little weight, right? Just to cut the chill, especially in warmer climates. But you know, if we go inside a building, the AC's on, stuff like that. Okay, so, oh my gosh, all of you keep your houses so cold. How do y'all do it? In the winter, I keep mine at 65 degrees, Retha says. Sarah says 72 is perfect for my house. I am like telling my husband, like I can no longer wear tank tops and shorts in here. Like I literally need to make myself turtlenecks. This is insanity. Deanna says hers is 72 to 73. Shell Hardy 25 says 68 all the time with the ceiling fans on. Okay, no. My Caribbean blood cannot handle that, y'all. No, no way. All right. So anyways, this is what I'm doing. That is the yarn. Super cute. Um, and I'm following along with Jana's Knit Along. Um, her channel is Pearl Together, P-U-R-L Together. If you're interested, she has a great teaching style. Um, she has a ton of tutorials, like how to knit socks, toe up, and all this. Good degrees. It was amazing. It does wonders for your skin. <laughs> 95 degrees and 100% humidity. I will take it all day over the cold, dry, anytime. Okay, so... Oh, sorry. Sometimes a microphone, if it hits my skin, then it ends up covering. But you see how I have it? Ah, because it's too heavy and it flips out if I put it here. But anyways, <laughs> Sally says hell on earth. Girl, it's super warm. It's tropical. The skin, the hair grows. I mean, it's amazing. I love humidity. Okay, so that is what I'm working on. That is not work related. I have nothing to do with the pattern. <laughs> I'm not testing it. I'm just following instructions. And Feels so good. Can anybody else relate? Like, are y'all doing things that bring you joy that have nothing to do with your work? <laughs> so that is what I've been working on. Uh, I think maybe next I will show you the fabric that I picked up. Uh, hey, Pat is asking, quick question. She's asking, will there be a bag club this year? So we mentioned this in one of the previous live chats that we hosted on Facebook, maybe now a couple months ago. Uh, we're planning to release one for the fall. So there is going to be one this year, but, you know, everything kind of got thrown out of whack. Um, so we're hoping for the fall. Yes. Okay. So let me grab the fabric that I bought in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. So I can show you guys. Such cute prints. Okay. If this is not me, I don't know what is. Do you see the flowers and the watermelons and the strawberries? Oh my gosh. It is like the cutest small scale print. I la la love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Of course, you know, that's, you never ask a quilter that. Nancy says that's so PR for real. <laughs> I love it. And I love that it's small scale, but it has a ton of color, even though the background is white. And let me see if I can read the selvage, because you know I got more than half a yard. For sure I got a selvage up in here. I think these I got one yard cuts. Hello. Dear Stella. Love Dear Stella. It's a sister company to Timeless Treasures, which I designed my collections with. This one is called Dear Stella. And it's just it just has a pattern number, so it was just designed by them. Dear Stella 1260. And I'll just show you the salvage real quick. Uh, it's probably backwards because my phone is in selfie mode. But anyways, Dear Stella Design and the, the pattern number is Stella1260. Love it. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But oh my gosh, even as a lining, because you know I like to use light colored fabrics for my linings and bags. Oh, love it. Okay. Another one. Super cute. I think it was my friend Laura who was with me that was like, hello, this is so you when we saw this print. How cute. Another Dear Stella design. Chickens, there's beets growing. There's a tractor. There's a rake in a little garden. There's mama hens and chickies. Oh my gosh. How cute is that? And this one is the, another Dear Stella design, but it's, it's not um, by like a pattern designer. It's like Dear Stella, the company designs it. I guess that's why it just has those numbers. And this one is Stella 812. 
And I love that it has a lot of the uh, blank space in the, you know, around it. But oh my gosh, there's even a little horsey. Sarah, look for you. How cute is that little horsey there? So um, Priscilla's asking, where did I get this NPR? I got this, I want to say at International Sewing Supplies. Is that the name of a store in San Juan? I think that's what the store was called. It was a big place. It was like a brother dealership. And they did everything. They had like heirloom stuff, machine embroidery. They had uh, quilting cotton, some apparel fabrics. It was great. All right, so that one. This one's super cute. And then let me show you. We saw some sprinkles that I had to get. I love the small scale stuff because I feel like I can use it in anything, any geometric or small stuff. How cute is this little sprinkle one? And this one is by, it says Louis and Irene. It's called the Old Chocolate Shop. So I guess that's the brand. I've never heard of it before. Has anybody heard of that? Louis and Irene? It says Louis and Irene there. Yeah, so these were one yard cuts that I got. And the background, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a really, really faint pink. So, so cute. And then you can't go wrong with geometrics. These are just half yard cuts that I got. This is from Riley Blake. Little plus signs that reminded me from the, like, uh, of the plus signs that I designed in my collection years ago. And these are all like the geometrics. I wanted some neutrals, gray on gray, white on white. I like tonal stuff, you know? I like things that like play as a solid, but still have a little something else. I don't like plain stuff. This one has like little dashes. Hi, Patricia, thanks for joining us. This one is gorgeous. And I'll see if you can see it. The gold in it is metallic. Can you, I don't know if that's even showing up if I jiggle it back and forth in the light like that. But that gold dash is, um, is slightly metallic. So that's a little bling. I know Allie would like that for something for her. And the same thing here, I had to get it in another colorway cause it was super cute. And these are from, by who? Let me see. Oh, they're Riley Blake designs. This one is called Blooms and Bobbins. Are the, is this from Melly? Oh my gosh, I bought the fabric. I didn't even know my friend designed it. Seriously, this is from Melly Mora's uh, collection for Riley Blake. You guys know Melly from Melly Sews? Hello, I didn't even know she designed this. What? I was not paying attention. I just saw the print and had to have it. All right, so those were those that I got from them. But yeah, if you're in Puerto Rico, check them out. International Sewing Supplies in San Juan. So that's some of the quilting cottons that I got there. Then we had found a yarn shop. And, and it's funny because when we got back to the cruise, people were like, how did you know about these stores? And I'm like, I speak Spanish. So we literally got off the cruise ship, walked out to the street, and I'm like hailing a cab, like I'm not standing in line with the tourists. Let me, let me holler in my Spanish over here so I could get a driver. And so we gave him the, ad like we just Googled sewing shop, you know, quilt shop. And um, when we gave him the address, he was like, well, if I drop you there, you're not gonna be able to catch an Uber back to the port. So he's like, well, I'll just wait for you. And we're like, really? Thank you. It's like, are you insane? Why would you sign up to wait for three ladies at a quilt shop. Good luck waiting for us, you know, like, <laughs> I can't guarantee we'll be out quick. And so we went inside the shop and bought a bunch of stuff. Then we were talking to the people at the shop and they were like, oh, you guys are looking for more fabric. There is a leather store two blocks down. So we jumped back in the car and we, oh, great. Roxanne looked it up. She says, Lewis and Irene is a British design company. Cool, I had never heard of it. And that design is super cute. So I'll have to look them up and see what else they got. Thank you for that. So we get back into the van with the driver. And of course he's Dominican, so you know we're bonding, we're talking all the Spanish. And so I tell him, hey, there's another shop right there a couple blocks down, can you take us over there real quick and wait for us there too? <laughs> so he did, and we bought some amazing leathers. And then after that, while we were in the car, I was like, Google, oh, my friend Stacy that was with us, seriously, fly. Oh, Tamara says, Louis and Irene has fun knits for garment sewing. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to look them up because I love those kind of cutesy prints, especially in spandex knits would be super cute for t-shirts and like little tank dresses and stuff for Allie too. Um, thank you guys for the information. Look at that. We can learn so much together <laughs> from each other. I had never 
heard of that company ever. Um, and so we were, uh, my friend Stacy, who is a knitter and a crocheter, was with us, and she was like, there's a yarn shop. So I told the guy, here's this address. Can you take us there too? <laughs> so he was our private driver all morning, and we went shop to shop. Then we went to a yarn shop. We were talking there with the owner, taking selfies, buying yarn, and the guy was waiting. Um, we paid him good, though. We paid him good. And then he took us back to the ship. So we literally, it was like a pop, 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 drop, drop, you know, shop, shop, shop. Uh, oh, we did eat. I think we ate lunch in the old San Juan, and then we went back on the ship. It was, and I wiped those stores clean. <laughs> it was super fun. But yeah, that was that adventure, and I bought some yarn in Puerto Rico. And I'll show you it here. I bought a skein of, it was super cool because it's hand-dyed yarn by Candy, Cane, uh, Candy Corn Yarns. It says hand-dyed in the Caribbean. Uh, the owner of the shop, the shop is called Madejas in Puerto Rico, in San Juan. And the owner was uh, telling us that the yarn dyer for candy corn yarns is local to them there. So I got a colorway called Sugar Cookie, and it's just like soft weight yarn, fingering weight yarn. Let me pull this back so you can see. Hello, speckles. All the yummy colors. Thank you, Susie. She says, I love the yarn that you just dyed. I actually, I, if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I am... Um, Valeria is asking, how come you speak fluent Spanish? Amazing. Girl, Spanish is my first language. I'm first generation American. My parents are Dominican and I grew up in Miami. Hello. You can't live in Miami without speaking Espanol for sure. But um, <laughs> this is the yarn that I got. And so I'm using it now because I, you guys, who even am I? Designing knitting shawls? Like what is going on? And so I'm working on a sample of a new design that I've created. I need something simple and quick. And that's the problem that like when I jump into these different crafts, it's like, okay, all this is too complex, too complex. I need something more mindless. So I'll give y'all a little peek, super simple garter stitch with some lace paneling. So I'm just doing this a little bit. But you see how gorgeous those speckles show up? I mean, this to me is not even like speckled. This is like a neutral. I can rock this with anything that I want. Okay, so I'm making my sample of my first knit shawl design. <laughs> I'm a mess, y'all. I'm a mess. But anyways, the yarn is amazing. Candy Corn Yarns, super cute. Check her out on Instagram. I follow her. She design or she um, dyes super cute yarns, and you can get them online too. But if you're in Puerto Rico, Made has has it all. Candy Corn Yarns again, and that, that's her name on Instagram too. I love it. All right, so that's that. Speaking of yarn that I was dying, I guess next I will, um, oh my God, talking about all the yarn. Because I, that's, like I said at the beginning, it's kind of like, ugh, I mean, I have all my sewing machines set up and I've been working on them because I've been doing work, work stuff, filming on the machines. You know what I'm saying? Doing stuff at the cutting table, the ironing, and just back and forth and like work, work. So it's like when I do all that for like, I mean, what, two weeks ago, I was staying up till 4.30 in the morning filming. You think I want to get up in the middle of, the, you know, the next day after doing chores and cooking and all this stuff and like sew for fun? No. Like that took up all the work energy from me for fun for me was like sit down and just knit something mindless. So I'll show you some yarn that I dyed last year, dyed last year. And if any of you have ideas, it could be knit or crochet of what I can make with this. It's worsted weight. <laughs> the purples again, seriously. It's not my favorite color. I just like colors. So we dyed these skeins last year. Aren't they funky? I love it. I love it. I love it. But it's worsted weight. I think I could probably make Allie um, a little cardigan or a sweater or something. Deanna says you need squishy socks for the new house. Absolutely. Speaking of which, if I show you in my notebook another pattern that I bought from another one of the YouTubers that I follow. Her name is Denise, but her name like on Instagram and stuff is um, Earth Tones Girl. No fear, shorty socks. I'm not a fan of those huge long socks. I don't need long socks. I live in Florida. But shorties, what? I can totally rock these. Okay? Bought the pattern from her. They're called the No Fear Shorty Socks. I bought the pattern from her on Ravelry, and I'm, you know, organizing it in my little notebook thing here. Um, I have plenty of yarn for it, for sure, especially since last night I was dyeing yarn. I dyed um, some fingering weight, some BFL, like Blue Face Lester, fancy uh, fingering weight sock yarn. Um, but yeah, 
Anybody have ideas for worsted weights? What could I knit or crochet with this? Hats, I know I could do hats, but I feel like since I managed to get matching-ish skeins, you know, I could probably make Allie a funky little sweater. It almost looks like galaxy. We'll see. But it's worsted weight, you know, this stuff is thick. Oh, is that what you were saying to make chunky socks out of this worsted weight? Girl, those things would go up to my, they would keep me warm though. I know, um, Amelia's saying um, the yarn matches your wall and the chair, you must really hate those colors. Listen, random, random thought. My mom almost named me Amelia. Do I look like an Amelia? I don't think so. Vanessa, Amelia. Hmm. Whenever I meet people with the name Amelia, I'm like, my name was almost Amelia, almost. Anyways, it's so funny. Like, I don't know, it just ends up happening. But yeah, uh, the other, the yarn that I dyed last night is hanging in my laundry room. So many colors, I'll have to do um, another haul, like to show you guys what I got. But when I was at Blueprint, so I had to go back, what did I say, end of February to film. Uh, I made a friend there who I've watched some of her classes and now I'm watching even more of them. Her name is Lauren Nelkin. She is like the knitting with beads instructor. Have you all seen her? So of course I follow her on Instagram and um, um, she was posting like she was packaging kits and sending kits and stuff like that. Deanna says she loves her. That's awesome. Yeah. So I got on her Etsy page or her Etsy shop and um, got a couple of her patterns. And so I thought, okay, these would be cute little projects that I can make without feeling like I have to tackle an entire garment. So look at this, this is called the film. And she has, a, while, while I was there filming the next um, uh, Blueprint Project Kits courses, she was there filming the class for this. How cute is that little bracelet? Oh my gosh, I could totally rock that. And it's a little bit of knitting and there's some beads. So I thought, well, I'll tackle this and um, Learn how to put beads on some knitting. Sarah says, oh, I could swing a tiny project like that. Maybe we should do a little knit along, Sarah. You want to do it? Super cute. And everything is in here, yo. The kit contains <clears throat> 20 yards of Anzula Breeze, which is 65% silk and 35% linen yarn. Size 16, 6 slash 0 or uh, Japanese seed beads. Then it has the Miyuki Delica beads one hook and eye clasp, like the closure for the bracelet, dental floss threader for stringing the beads on, then there's super floss, which she uses for placing the beads like where they need to go. And then you have a pattern download code to download the pattern in here. Guys, I'm dead. Oh, cute! Okay, listen. So I had to get it. And then I got a bigger one. This is her bead kerchief, which the craft, the craftsy, sorry, blueprint course that she was there teaching covers both of these projects, okay? So this is her bead kerchief. Let me get my hand off the picture. Look at this shawl. What? I remember when I first started, I was like, why do people make so many shawls? Like, who cares about a shawl? I need shawls. My house is freezing now. I need all the shawls, okay? So that's why I'm designing shawls. <laughs> so her name again, Jerry, is Laura Nelkin. And if you're on Blueprint, look up her classes. If you look up knitting and beads, all her classes will pop up. She has a bunch, but this was kind of like a mini course. Do you guys remember back in the days, like the Craftsy courses would be like a ton of content. These are more like shoop, quickie condensed. I've already watched the class. So, uh, but it was one of those things where I was playing it in the background so I can be like, oh, I can totally tackle that. So anyways, check her out, Laura Nelkin. Um, her website is Nelkin, is her last name, N-E-L-K-I-N, designs.com. Just look her up. Just do a Google search for Laura Nelkin. You'll find her Etsy and um, you'll see it all pop up. Anyways, this one, of course, has a whole skein, and the skein is Leading Men Fiber Arts Showstopper. So it's a, a sock weight yarn, 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. You get the seed, the seed beads, all the stuff, the super floss, the dental floss, all the stuff, and then the code, again, to download it. So it's a whole skein, and they come in different colorways. So I just got this one because I thought this would be kind of a cool neutral, and um, if I mess up with the beads, Maybe it won't show as much because it's a darker yarn. Who knows? But these are the things I think of. So these are other little cutesy projects. Sarah, let me know, girl. Let me know if you want to tackle this. It's a Blueprint class. And so if you have a membership to Blueprint, Blueprint is myblueprint.com. 
Um, once this is over, if you're watching the recording, I will uh, include all the links and stuff so that you all can find the stuff that I'm talking about. Hopefully I'll remember everything, but I'll add it to the description box. All right, so anyways, that was that. Um, did anybody see my post a couple of weeks ago where uh, Blueprint was like back open because they couldn't ship anything? Um, and then when they reopened, they had a crazy sale that was 50% off. So I had to buy like all the yarn. I don't, it's like I have a ton of yarn. Why am I buying yarn? But I think I buy yarn because I own a fabric store, so I already have fabric. <laughs> so I buy more yarn. It was on sale. I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I got. <sighs> I'm dead. Super cute. Sock, self striping. These would be cute for my shorties when I tackle those little shorties by Earth Tones Girl. Okay. <laughs> Rita says, I'm on a fabric diet. I have to use up some of my stash. I feel you. I feel you. But I'm the type of person, I feel like there's two types of people when it comes to fabric. You either are someone who buys fabric for a specific project you have in mind, or you buy fabric because you like it. And then you're like, oh, I'll figure out what I'm going to use it for later. I am the latter. Anybody? Who are you when it comes to fabric? Are you the person that has the project in mind and then you buy the fabric to match it? Or do you just like, this is too cute. I can't pass this up. I will definitely find something to do. You see, a bunch of you are saying you are the latter. Hello, friends. We can relate. So same thing. Like yesterday, um, <clears throat> I had a little bit of a rough day. And so it was late at night and I started dyeing yarn. And I told my husband, I love that when I'm in the mood to dye yarn, I have all the supplies. Because the worst thing is like the inspiration hits. You're ready to go and then you're like missing supplies. Or when it comes to cooking, I hate when that happens. When you go, you have everything ready and you're like missing one ingredient that you just can't replace. Super annoying. So instead, you stock everything up. So when you do need it, you have it. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. All right. So I got some Pima Cotton DK yarn, and this is Cloudborn. This is all Blueprint's uh, branded yarn. And so I thought, summer, Florida, it's hot. Let me get some cotton and try to make some cute, like really breezy t-shirts, like whether it's crochet or knit, maybe something loose that I can uh, throw over a tank top, you know, something like that, but super cute. And you need a lot, because you know, depending on your size, you need a lot of yarn. You see, So Crafty says, yep, if I like it, I buy it. Letitia says, buy it because I like it. <laughs> Susie says, even her neighbors check her stash before they head to the store. That's what I'm saying. You got to like shop your stash. I'm just saying. More of these gorgeous, look at this. This is a sock weight yarn. Gorgeous, gorgeous, rich teal color. This is the Pima cotton. And I got a couple of those. This is cute because then I can test out different patterns and make something for my daughter um, in a smaller size before I tackle it for myself. This one was on a crazy sale. It's by Lorna's Laces and they dyed it and it was just like a ridiculous price that I just had to get it because I'll use it one day. <laughs> yeah, the teal is gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? And I got it in the cotton. Look how cool like it takes different, you know, like obviously it's not the same colorway, but it just is just those colors. Everything matches. Now this is one of my favorite colors, for sure. Anything teal, from light to all the way dark, super rich. So Alicia's asking me, do you like knitting better than crochet? Also, is knitting easier than crochet? So I do like knitting more than crochet. I think more because it's more like a, it's newer to me. Um, I learned how to crochet when I was nine and I only made like boring kind of stuff. Now that you look at the crochet designs, you're like, wow. This is super cute. I can make this. Back in the day, early 90s, that was not where it was at. Um, and knitting for me is just like, when I started knitting, there were already like so many amazing patterns and projects and things that I could just do. At first, I hated knitting because I was like, it's so slow. I can crochet this super quick. But you get totally different textures. Like the, the stitch definition is different. It's just, they're two different things. Now, because I've taught my kids how to knit and crochet, I will say, oh my God, seriously, this, I can't with this fly. Ah! Guys, when you see me here with a strip of fly tape hanging next week, you'll know why. Farm life. But um, 
my kids, my son can make hats, he can knit, he can purl, he can do ribbing, he can cast on and bind off, my daughter can cast on and bind off. She only knows how to knit, she doesn't bother with the purling. Um, she's not a huge fan, she doesn't love knitting as much as he does. But crochet, they can only do the chain stitch. My, they struggle. It's just like having the hook on the end. So like seeing and teaching students and kids, I would say crochet is harder because there's more manipulating that needs to be done. It's easy for me, right, because I learned early on. But if you're someone new to both, I think um, <laughs> Laura says a teal fly catcher. Okay, like a little ribbon and on the back, slap that sticky stuff on it. <laughs> Girl, you know me too well. Um... But I think if you're starting new right now, I think knitting is easier. And Roxanne says, I find knitting is like a form of meditation. Agreed. It's funny because in any other aspect, I would be like, it's the exact same thing over and over. How boring. And that's how I feel about piecing. Like when I make a quilt, I like cutting. Sewing the exact same thing over and over is so boring to me. But I don't know why that same idea in knitting is like a dream. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how my brain works, but I think knitting is easier. It's easier because it's like less going on. You can like let go of one and like grab the yarn around. Easier to like tension as a whole, like to get better to where you see progress, I think. Just because the progress I've seen in kids, little kids, you know? So yeah, and look at this gorgeous one. Another sock yarn. Oh. <laughs> I promise this is not my favorite color. <laughs> so weird, right? How it's everywhere. Okay. So anyways, those are the yarns that I got. This is another gorgeous. Actually, I dyed one almost the same color last night. Interesting. But, yep. That's all the yarn that I got from Blueprint and their ridiculous sale. Thank you, Blueprint. Good looking out. Um, yeah, and we were talking about designing new uh, the knitting shawl that I'm working on. Um, but... I have already, like, intro. I know a lot of you, like, when I post things on knitting, people are like, are you going to do tutorials? So if you are interested in learning how to knit, of course, there's a gajillion different resources online. But I did start off a Knitting for Beginners series. I have videos up already on, like, introductory, how to knit. I show you continental and English style so you can try it out and see what works easier for you. Uh, then I show you how to purl. So if you can cast on, if you can knit and purl, then you'll be able to tackle this next free tutorial that I'm going to release. This is a dishcloth that I designed. Look at me, knit designer. <laughs> so, isn't it awesome? It's a grid stitch, uh, my grid stitch washcloth or dishcloth. Okay, love the texture. And it's a free pattern. I'm gonna do a little video on it. Well, I already have. Um, but I need to finish the part that I'm like filming so then I can edit the whole thing together. I'll show you where I am. In the video course, we get to this point, and now we're starting to decrease. So I show you how to do the decrease, and then I need to continue decrease, 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 so I can show you how to bind off. So, and the gauge and all that stuff. And a lot of people have been writing me because they're like, hey, I see that you're coming out with this tutorial. I don't know what to get. So we are going to have a limited number of little kits for beginners, like with straight needles, good quality ones. Um, and yarn that will work for it. So you'll have, you know, gauge doesn't really matter too much, like the fabric. I like it a little bit dense, but a little bit looser works too. You can make them really airy. The good thing about having a really airy washcloth, like this one, super open, is that it dries quicker, right? So super cute. So any size needle, I mean, you could do it with whatever. So it's 100% cotton yarn, and it's my grid stitch washcloth or dishcloth, same difference. I made myself a little one for like scrubbing my face or removing makeup. These are cute gifts, y'all. This only uses like 11 grams of yarn. It's like nothing. So the kits are going to be for sale on my website when I release this. So I'm finishing up the tutorial. Then when I post it, you know, I'll have a link in the description box of the video. And that way, if those of you that want to get in on it, there's going to be a bunch of different colored yarns and little kits together. I'm putting them together all cutesy in like little pouches with little stuff. Anyways, I was inspired by, hello, Laura's super cute packaging. But I thought, you know what, let me put together some kits for this. Um, and they'll be limited, of course, but if you're getting it as a gift for someone who's at home right now and would like to join in, uh, for those of you that do want to join in, make sure that you watch my knitting tutorials up to now because you need to know how to, you know, the basics. Like, you need to know how to do a knit stitch and a purl stitch. 
and then I will teach you the increase and the decrease in that tutorial for the little washcloth. And it's cool because the way that I designed it and wrote the pattern, you can make it as big or as little as you want without needing another pattern. You know what I'm saying? So like we start on a corner, super simple, okay? And then you increase, so it builds, builds, builds until you have like the length or the or like the width or the height of the size washcloth that you want, then you stop. You follow the instructions to do like four more rows in here and then you start decreasing, decreasing, decreasing and you finish off on the other end. Super cool, super easy. And that way you can customize it to whatever you want. Use any cotton yarn you have, whatever size needle you can grab quick. You know those are my kind of projects. Whether it's sewing, quilting, knitting, I don't care. I need something quick, easy that I can get right to. Okay, so these are some that are half, you know, worked and stuff. Only thing is that you gotta pay attention. So this one will have a free PDF. So you can print out the instructions, okay? And like mark off where you are. Claire says, I can't follow written knitting instructions. So I'll share some tips with you because that's the only way. The only way is to follow it in writing. I cannot do it like on a, on a computer screen. You know, if you pull it up, I can't. I need to like see it and be like, okay, I did that cross out or like, Five rows of this, like tally it up on the side. I have to. There's apps that you can use where you can like hit it. One, I, what did I use? I think it's just called the counter app. And you can enter your project and just every time you finish a row, tap it. And it tells you like seven, you know, tap it again, eight. And that way you can keep track. So when you put the project away and you come back to it in two, three days, you're like, okay, where did I end off? I had just finished row eight. So now I know where to pick up at. But um, I'm disorganized as they come. This is not the craft where you can do that. This is not like knitting or, or quilting where I'm like, eh, I'll fudge that seam allowance. I can make it work. You can't make it work in this. <laughs> so I feel like it's a challenge for me to like focus and pay attention. <laughs> Debbie says she can't pay attention long enough. And, and I think that maybe is what attracts me to it. Like once I get it, I can just, okay, this is easy. But then if it's like, this is a great example. Let me share with you a project. So a year ago, I went to Houston to visit my friend Stacy. She lives in Houston. She knits and crochets. And uh, we went to Houston Fiber Fest, which is like a fiber show for knitters, crocheters, weavers, spinners, all that stuff. So we went. And I found a vendor, an indie dyer. I want to say her name is Night Owl Fibers. And it was this young girl from Houston, an indie dyer, meaning an independent yarn dyer girl. She was there with her mom. I fell in love with this colorway. Can you see the gray, how the background is gray and it's just a ton of different colored speckles? So I bought the yarn there. I bought DK weight yarn. It's so squishy and lush, okay? This is again, a neutral for me because I can rock this with anything. I bought all the five skeins that she had there and I said, okay, I'm gonna make a weekender sweater. So I cast on that day. And in two weeks, it, the sweater is worked from the bottom up. It's knitted, right? It has a, a shorter hem on the front, the ribbing, you see it on the back, clearly on my ends. It has this like faux seam thing going down the middle, super, super cute, the back. It's worked in reverse stockinette. So you're knitting regular, but it's worn like this so that the pearl side is out. Okay, love it. I did all this in like two weeks. And here we are, a year and one month later and I have yet to touch it. Why? Because when I went to pick this up again at a soccer practice, I was reading the instructions like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna work on my weekender. And right when I pulled out the instructions, it was like, put half of the stitches on a holder now and this and that. And it just wasn't at a step where I could stop and just, oh yeah, this is easy, easy knitting. Like just sit there and kind of potato chip knitting where you just don't have to pay attention, no. And I just have not sat down with the mental focus of like, okay, what, where am I and what do I need to do? But seriously, half the sweater is done. I mean, and I was like, oh, I'll finish that before it gets cold for sure. What? No, a whole year later. So I'm thinking with this cardigan knit along that I'm gonna follow with Pearl Together that we're working on that campsite Cardi by Alicia Plummer, that maybe I will be inspired to get back to this one. <laughs> Uh, I see some of you can relate. You have been there, done that. Yes. So, yes. That project is here. It's chilling in my fringe supply project bag. Super cute, wax canvas. For one day, 
to be picked up. I know Susie says you, exactly what you say, Susie. She says in your free time. Yep, in my free time where I lounge back and say, oh, I have nothing else to do. What should I do? <laughs> I will then pick it up. Hi, Carla. Hey, Annette. She says, every time I look at my sewing room. <laughs> Rita's asking, Vanessa, is there anything you can't do? So I get this question a lot uh, just because I do so much random stuff. But there is. My, my answer is always the same. I cannot sing to save my life. But everything else, I literally feel like I can learn. If it's a skill or something, like I just learn, you know, practice it, figure out, watch somebody do it, read a book, see a video, something, then try it and be like, oh, cool, I can do that. <laughs> oh, that's kind of how I think. I just love to learn new, I mean, random stuff, random. I just like to try new things. You know, it's that Gemini side of me. All right. So those are the kind of projects that we're working on. I think I saw someone was asking when is the next garment sewing class? So the next one is actually halfway filmed. And instead of releasing like a video this week and a video the next week, like once you sign up for the class, like I've done in the past for ones that have multiple views, say like the Michelle tank top dress, when we did that course, it was like four different views and all kinds of different hacks and changes and all that, that had to spend, you know, several months. The next pattern, which I've been mentioning for a while now is, let me grab it. The Helene Cardigan by Jali. By the way, Jali released uh, new patterns. I'm one of the first ones to grab them. They're on order and they're coming to me. So they will be listed in our online shop as soon as we get them. There are some super cute patterns in the new collection that I will be tackling and they will be online courses. So the Helene Cardigan is a super simple Cardi. You guys probably saw me wear this back in October when I went to New York for an event and I made a matching pencil skirt. Everybody was asking me like, where did I get that suit? And I'm like, it's not a suit. It's a cardigan and a pencil skirt. Super simple projects. I can make the whole outfit in less than two hours. It's a joke. But because of the fabric that I use, it's a double knit. And this is Bullet, which we carry in the shop. I don't know if it's, is it? Yeah, I think it is listed in the online shop. Um, it has more weight to it, so it hangs a little bit more formally than if it was just like a cotton spandex casual type of fabric. And... Um, it has super cute pockets. The construction method is a genius. Um, I had a, a luxury sewing retreat last year where we made this. We made two different Jali patterns and all the ladies were making them in black, like for work kind of blazers. It's so funny because it looks so like if you dress it up, it looks very formal, but it's like casual wear. Like you feel like it's like, oh my gosh, this is so comfy. There's no way that it could be like a work outfit, you know? Um, so that's that. We made one here in a super funky print, which I need to add to the shop. It's like feathers in these crazy colors. But I could totally rock this with like a black tank and black pants and then a wild print. Yeah. Are we sit? I just noticed it's the same colors again, y'all. The blues and the plums. Wild. But yeah, I would totally rock this for sure. That's that one. And then. Remember that Jali patterns come in a gajillion sizes? So that, those are like my size. And then I made one for Allie, for my daughter. It's so funny because it's such a like dress up thing that you don't really see kids wearing and they don't really sell kids clothes like this. So I made it for her in black, but then she wanted the top stitching thread to be fancy and teal. So the top stitching <laughs> is aqua, okay? but it's a little black cardigan that she throws over any little dress if she's going to like a fancier event, you know? So, so easy. And this is the kid size nine. So it goes from a kid size two to a woman's size 22 or 24, I think. So easy to do. So this is gonna be the next class and I'll start announcing it pretty soon, probably in the next week or two as I get the course together. So what I wanna do is that when I announce it and open it up at the early bird sale price, I want the entire course already to be available, okay? Because a lot of us are home. That way you can like sign up, you can get the fabric and the pattern from us. And as soon as you get it, you'll be able to jump right into the project without having to wait. It's pretty simple, straightforward. I'll share tips on, uh, you don't need a serger to make it. Nancy says, I'm thinking I can tackle that. Girl, you absolutely can. Absolutely, okay? No, no Crafty Gemini fabric line. She's asking about that too. <laughs> so, um, 
a, a different colors, different fabrics, and we'll list all that stuff. It's true, Debbie says she can't have enough cardigans. Apparently, now that I'm in this freezing cold house, I too will not be able to have enough cardigans. I need to make more stuff. Um, and we also made some samples up of it. I don't have them here, but out of just like a cotton spandex for really just casual, like if you're wearing a summer dress or a t-shirt dress or something, and you just want something that looks like a t-shirt, but will cut the chill off like on a cool night, you know? You can make it out of cotton spandex. So it can be a single jersey knit or a double knit, something a little bit more hefty, like these Bullet and Liverpool prints. Uh, those will be just, you know, a tad warmer too. So a lot of different options. Uh, and we talk all about that. I already filmed all that stuff, like tracing out the pattern, different fabrics, the amount of stretch that you want to have in it. We've, I've already filmed all that um, to the point where we're sewing it together. So I will show you how to sew it together just on a regular sewing machine. If you have straight and zigzag stitch is what you'll need. If you have a serger, I will share tips. It's kind of like the bonus videos that I do separate. So that if you do have a serger, you can see how you can use it um, to construct some of the seams on this project, but that way you don't have to feel like you have to have a serger to make it because you don't. All these, look at this. Uh, this one was done with a serger. Hold on. <laughs> I'm like, wait, let me show you. Oh, this one was serged. Oh, this one was serged too, but they don't have to be because you can see that they were serged, um, to put the stuff on together at the end, you can even serge the seams after. But the point is that because, oh, here, I'll show you. So the neckline, it's just turned under, okay, and stitched. So you see the top stitching is just turned under. And of course, my daughter would pick a contrasting thread so my wobbly stitches can show. But it's all good. It looks great on. So the fabric doesn't fray. This thing has been washed like 17 times. Okay, the edge of the fabric doesn't fray. So every seam could be done the same way, you know? We had these in the shop as samples, so we did go ahead and search the seam so it looks a little bit more professional when people come in and they're like looking and digging like let's see what what, what kind of teaching are you doing <laughs> but yes you can just make it on a regular sewing machine we have the Helene patterns in stock on the website it's Helen with an e at the end like the French spelling of it um, you'll need the pattern because that's not part of the class right it's not my pattern so you buy the pattern get the fabric and and thread that matches and then you can sign up for the class and you'll be ready to go okay so that is the next garment sewing class. After that, we're gonna do this mimosa t-shirt. It has turned under and a high low hem. I can't even show it here. But yes, I thought a t-shirt for the summer would be good. And so that's gonna be the next pattern, but yes. Helene cardigan, the cardigan is, uh, <laughs> Nancy says I'm in, I need more fluff hiders. It's a great little throw over cardigan. And, Again, like I said, you can use a lighter weight fabric for a breezier. Actually, let me see if I have one of those samples back here real quick. Just to show you the difference between the fabrics. Oh, I do, hold on. Just the weight of the fabric gives it a totally, totally different look. All right, so this is the one we made in an olive colored cotton spandex. And it's just like a t-shirt with sleeves straight up. Don't mind the wrinkles. Okay, so can you see how it's just like a, a quickie t-shirt cardigan, you know? It's just like t-shirt material. So like I said, if you just need something, like if you work in an office, but you just need something to just like an extra layer of a cotton jersey, super cute. Let me take this, I actually might leave it on, it's cold in here. And then look at this, in a super lightweight slub knit. Practically sheer. And I mean, look, it like falls into nothing. It's so lightweight. So you can go from a super lightweight knit to a thicker weight and make it look more like a blazer top like the other ones I showed you. But look, I can, I mean, do you see how drapey it is? The pockets. And it's just a super lightweight cardigan. And it's so funny because when people see these hanging I'm in the shop, I would show them one and then they see the other one. They're like, oh, what pattern is this? I'm like, the exact same pattern. <laughs> it's all in the fabric, right? So I love that it has a lot of different options and it doesn't have like any crazy styling or anything. It's just so like a generic, cute, 
party that you can you know dress it up or dress it down so that's going to be the next class and i will announce it if you're not yet subscribed to my email newsletter make sure you go to craftygemini.com and on the log like on the main page there you'll see where it says like sign up for the email list and do that because that's the quickest and easiest way for you to find out of anything online classes new free tutorials pdf patterns what i'm up to all that kind of stuff okay so yeah so Laura says she feels like she needs a fabric class, Fabric 101. So it's a lot. And I feel like you wouldn't really get a lot out of it if you had just a class on fabric because you leave with the information, but because you don't yet see how to apply that information, it's kind of like everything goes in one ear and out the other. I know because I've done little lectures like that and people are like, oh, wow. And then like they go home and they have a million and one questions because they don't know how to take that information and apply it into the projects. So what I try to do when I teach these garment sewing classes is teach the fabrics through that one project. <laughs> she says, that's 102. Oh, you mean like just like, this is fabric. It has cotton in it. <laughs> A little spandex. So it stretches. That's what you need, Laura. You are hilarious. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, she's laughing. Um, and so like for this cardigan, we'll talk about the amount of stretch in the fabric. Feel a fabric. and and. What we've done in the past, right, and what we'll continue to do is sell you the fabric that matches that pattern that I'm teaching so that you know it will work. It's not me telling you, go out and find a cotton spandex fabric that has at least 40% stretch along the crosswise grain. That don't mean no, nothing to nobody that doesn't know about fabrics, right? But if I tell you, pick from any of these, they will all work for this cardigan, then you know. Even if it's a print that you don't love, get it. So you can work with the fabric, feel it, see, make a, a, a sample prototype that you see actually works. And then you get even more encouraged to like, okay, now I'm going to go out and buy the fabric that I really want. I, I feel confident. I can tackle this project instead of buying some, you know, super, super fancy fabric. And then you cut into it and then, you know, it doesn't turn out how you thought because maybe it didn't have enough stretch or it had way too much. There's all kinds of problems. <clears throat> so... That's how I like to teach. It's kind of like talk about the fabrics, what will work for this project, what won't work, and where you want to stay in. Um, Alicia's asking, are you going to make the skirt too? So we may tackle the skirt, but maybe that will be later on in the year, like a different product, because it's so easy. If you buy the pencil skirt pattern from, my, from our site, like we have the jelly pattern for it, so simple. I mean, ask the girls that, that came to uh, the retreat. So we did a luxury garment sewing retreat. We made the Helene cardigan and then a turtleneck top. Some ladies made dresses. It was the Jolly Yoko, which is a free PDF pattern. We made those two and they still had enough time that on the last night, everybody made a pencil skirt in like, it's a 15 minute project. So easy, so easy. Anybody can do it. Carla, you got jokes, Carla. She's cracking an inside joke from a long time ago. She says 100% cotton with spandex. How? Okay. <clears throat> Mom's Night Out says, I cannot sew adult clothing at all. So I get this a lot, which is another reason I love the Jolie patterns that I teach online. Because they come in so many different sizes. You can make it first for a little kid. Give it away, you know? Donate it. Give it to a niece, a neighbor, whoever. But that way you're working with less fabric. The exact same construction steps. You make it and then you feel like, wow, that wasn't that bad. Let me make one for myself. I feel like that cuts that intimidation down a little bit versus, and, and you use the same pattern because you already have it, right? So you make it for a five-year-old, then you just make it in your, your adult size right after because all the sizes are included in the pattern. So check it out, check it out. We have a bunch of Jolie patterns on our website under the hard copy patterns um, menu, like sub menu that you can check out. And under PDF and video workshops, you'll see any of the video courses that I teach on Jolie patterns are listed there. Okay. <clears throat> oh, mom's night out says it's the darts that kill me. So you got to make something that don't have darts to build up. You know, a lot of the patterns that have knits, uh, or that use stretch knits don't have darts because the fabric stretches. So I would recommend to start there. I, I know a lot of people really try to stay away from working with stretchy fabrics for their first projects, but I actually encourage beginners to start off with stretch knits because they stretch. So you have way more wiggle room. Okay. Tamara says, you got me loving jelly patterns, Vanessa. Ah, girl, I love them. I'm telling you, the new collection is on its way to me from Canada right now. So I'll list them as soon as I get them in the shop. And I'm about to lose my voice. <coughs> Excuse me. 
drink some water? Excuse me. But yeah. Cool. So that is what we're up to. That is what I'm up to. That is what's coming up next. And I've just been over here cracking jokes all night. Hilarious. <laughs> Bye, Debbie. We're about to log off anyways. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If this is something that you like and it's kind of just like unscripted and just me being me, let me know in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with any of your friends that maybe have missed it. Uh, and I'll see when I can do another one. I'm trying to hear. My daughter's room is right here. These kids are still up. I think I'm supposed to stay up till midnight tonight with them sewing. So it's a mom craft night, like a mama. We call it a mama night when I have them and we do stuff. So I need to clear up my little corner here um, so they can come and make something. I think my daughter wants to make pajamas and my son probably wants to make shorts. So we'll see. But thank you, everybody. Nancy says she loves the unscripted. Girl, you know I do good at unscripted. You never know what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> Susie says she'll tune in to Juice and Allie. Girl, he would love to be on camera. Allie would run away from the camera. My son would love it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Stay tuned for more tutorials, courses, projects, stuff like that that's coming up. And I'll see you all in the next video. Good night, everybody.